that my son committed suicide. And he committed suicide on my veranda. And my two small children are the ones who found him. And they kept telling me, Mommy, come and see. Kuna game mbaya chichi anacheza. And it was a Sunday evening and we had just had supper. And I thought that it was just one of his antics because he was a difficult boy. He became very difficult after he failed his Form 4 exams. And so finally when they, they kept going and coming, going and coming, and I was in my room. When I went outside, I found my son hanging on my, on my veranda. And the, the most wicked, wicked, wicked sight in my life is to see his tongue hanging almost up till here <laughs> because he had I screamed and I climbed up immediately and I collected him and I put him down and I rushed I started calling his sisters to take him to hospital so we rushed to hospital, but um, when we reached there, the hospital told us that um, nobody actually was doing anything. They checked it. I told them to put him on oxygen because he was lacking oxygen and his fingers had become gray because there was no oxygen. That usually happens after two minutes or about six minutes of lack of oxygen in the, in the body. So I walked out and I just went and I told God, God, please help me. Please help me. So when I went back, they were not doing anything. I said, What? Why aren't you doing anything? And then it just dawned on me that actually it was over. And as it was over, there was no need for oxygen. And there was no need for anything else. And so we had to wait there until we reported to the chief, reported to Embakasi police and wait until about three o'clock when the police car vehicle came to take my son and put him in a car vehicle car and take him to the mortuary that is the most wicked hateful thing that you'll ever need to see youth there is nothing There is nothing so hard that, can, that cannot be discussed. Whether it was sexual violence, which I came to discover that he had been sodomized, whether it was bullying in school, whether it was peer pressure, whether it was failing his exams. So when he failed his exams, first of all, his uh, knowing depression makes you have all the symptoms that are mentioned in that paper. All of them, he had them. He would come to the sitting room, he's dressed in his underwear, he doesn't care, he doesn't come out of bed. So I used to insist he comes and eats with us. He doesn't want to eat with us. And so they become very difficult when depression hits. So recognize, please, when somebody starts shutting down, there's a problem. This boy had grown up as a very healthy, loving, fun-loving boy, full of love, full of laughter, full of jokes. But something happened somewhere along the line and he just started withdrawing and I kid you not within six months he had committed suicide youth I want to tell you you know you can think that you're the one in the problem there's a place you will reach you will be unable to pull yourself out again so before you reach that pit before you reach that bottom please ensure that you have talked to somebody Please ensure that you have shared with somebody. There's nothing too hard. There's nothing too hard. The Bible says there is nothing new under the sun. So anything that you're going through is not new. It has happened to somebody else. And it can be solved. We buried my son, but now the after effects are the worst. Because now I kept blaming myself. What didn't I do? What did I do? I tried to be as supportive as I wanted. He refused school. One day he just said, Mami shule. And that was it. I had to look for another school for him to go to. And when he went to another school again, then he refused to attend lessons. 
and then he attends exams and then he shops that he fails his exams and so when we showed him his results and he came home with results he couldn't believe it and that's when he started going downhill so the sisters his sisters my children all tried to encourage him to do other things do you can't sit do you want to go to driving school do you want to go to college do you want to draw because he was a very good artist do you want to draw what do you want to do we'll do it for you he says bado sikotiari bado sijajua i'll let you know then that day he hung himself but what it has happened the after effects is that thereafter i'm the one who hit depression i couldn't believe i couldn't think i couldn't eat <laughs> i couldn't think <laughs> how do you bury a 20 year old son a boy with mandevu somebody how do you bury your son just how do you bury your son he in august this year we went to fix his grave and there's nobody who feels the pain apart from a mother apart from a brother apart from a sister nobody feels that pain you might think that you're in a pit but you're not there is always help i want to thank the government for for making mental health a priority because we would have lost so many when we were going to collect my son that day we were so many parents we left at 5 in the morning because we were going to siaya and i tell you six parents were there because of suicide six parents and those that were in there that were waiting to be collected the following day some were being brought in we cannot lose youth for something that is gas got a solution we cannot lose you who have got the energy to build our country for something that has got solutions i beg you to engage with the processes that are available for us for the options that are open for us and please so that you don't hurt your parents also because even when you go the pain remains with us the pain remains with the sisters the pain remains with the brother and the stigma that is associated with suicide i personally don't care <laughs> i personally don't care what anybody thinks about me and that is why i said that just to honor my son's memory i will speak about mental health thank you very much <laughs>